Hello, my lovely viewers, and welcome. I am Kira, a romantic ace, and tonight we are starting chapter one of Endless Summer, book two. <laughs> so the stinger for chapter one says, The adventure of a lifetime continues. Saving your friends will take you to the wildest reaches of La Huerta, where truly anything is possible. What on earth could that mean? Let's find out! So, yeah! Here's evil Tony Stark just floating in a Bacta tank, I guess? I don't know. I don't know what the hell's going on. I, also, where... What is up with his torso? Where where are his innards? I don't understand. Okay, whatever. An hour later, you're standing in the immaculate office on the top floor of the Celestial. Before you, a man floats in a glass tank of eerie green fluid. Eerie is a word for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Father. Facial match confirmed. That is indeed Everett Rourke. Thanks, Iris. Mm-hmm. What on earth is he doing here? Has he been here all along? I mean, probably. You're telling me. The whole time we were walking around this office, the man responsible for all of this was just floating here? I think Estella's gonna kill him. <laughs> Straight up, y'all, just... I mean, it'd be pretty easy right now. Alistair walks up to the tank, icily staring at his father's slumbering face. Although, to be fair, if anyone gets to kill him, it should be Alistair. You can't hide from me now, father. Now you have to face me. He's unconscious. He's not facing anybody, Alistair. The glass tube retracts into the ceiling. Rourke slumps out, naked. Oh, that's great. That's what I needed to see. Alistair's dad, naked. Joy. <laughs> Rourke slumps out, naked, as the last of the green fluid spills out at his feet. Gross, what the hell's in this? Do I want to touch it? Alistair is there to catch him. Rourke's eyes weakly flutter open. For the love of God, someone find this man some pants. Do it now. I did not sign up for for naked evil Tony Stark. Okay? Okay. You... You... You have a tattoo! Somehow was not expecting this from evil Tony Stark. I don't know why. Alistair's face quivers. Halfway between a sneer and a sob. A s a snob? Honestly, it suits Alistair. <laughs> yes, it's me. Rourke feebly pushes himself up. He staggers to the windows and gazes out at the dawn, slurring words under his breath. The endless... Is okay, Rourke. Uh, Rourke needs some food, I think. Blood sugar's a little low. The endless? What is that? What are you talking about? Rourke turns toward you. Oh, uh oh, oh no. Wham! Estella slugs him in the face. Oh my god, girl, yes. Yes! Get him! Wha Estella! No, let her go. <laughs> Rourke topples backward, crashing through his desk chair, and goes sprawling. Estella pursues him. Now's your chance. Get him. Uh, Estella, I advise restraint. Hmm. No. Estella. Iris's hologram flickers into Estella's path, but she marches straight through the projection. Yeah. <laughs> you dart in front of Estella and hold up your hands. Yeah, maybe don't kill him just yet. He might have a way off the island. 
Whoa, Estella, hang on. What are you doing? He's responsible for all of this, Kira. It's time he answers for it. You look from Estella to Alistair to Rourke's crumpled form who's still moaning nonsense. So we can step aside or stay put. Ugh. Oh, y'all. I would really love to just let her go wail on him, but here's the thing. If I do that, Alistair's not going to be too happy with me. And I still need Alistair to like me. I don't like this fact, but I do need him. So, unfortunately, Estella, I'm going to have to ask you to save that for book three. I'm going to stay put. You, Alistair, and Estella heave up Rourke's body. I, no, you two can have him. I ain't dragging naked Tony Stark anywhere. As you do, he breathes out a delirious whisper. I'm sorry, Olivia. Ooh. Ooh. Huh? His eyes flutter back closed. Falling unconscious. Okay, this is really badly worded because his eyes are not falling unconscious. He's falling unconscious, but okay. Alright. People love their gerunds, I don't know. Dawn is breaking, its cool light barely visible through the glass roof above the Celestial's grand atrium. You and your friends stand crowded around the slumbering form of Everett Rourke under a blanket on a sofa. Oh, thank God, he's finally covered. Okay. Whew. So, that's the guy. Hmm. Monster has nothing to say. Dude, your dad is shredded. Isn't he in his 50s? Craig, now... Now is not the time to be ogling evil Tony Stark. Like, first of all, he's unconscious, and that's a little creepy. Second of all, evil! Evil is the operative word here, my man! What are you doing? Oh, so that's where you get your abs. Whoa, Grace, that is... That is more information than I ever needed about Alistair. Literally ever. Because I actually don't think we ever see Alistair without his shirt in any of the books, and I would like to keep it that way, please, and thank you. Ugh. <laughs> Grace reaches for Alistair's abdomen. Alistair pulls away laughing, oh, before composing himself. Hmm. Mm hmm. Alistair knows how to laugh. Grace, please. You know how ticklish I am. Oh god, I'm... We're learning so much. <laughs> We're learning way too much. I'm uncomfortable. The hope is he can get us out of here when he wakes up. Maybe he knows what's going on? Maybe he's got a helicopter or something? And more importantly, he might know something about Diego. Your friends nod, exhausted, and wander off, the toll of last night's ordeal weighing heavily on everyone. You overhear giggling by the statue fountain at the exact center of the atrium. Oh my god, you're so right. It is. It so is. Uh, who's what now? Hey, it's Raj! We got a point with him! Kira! Kira! <laughs> Kira, this is ridiculous! You're gonna love it! Look! You survey the fountain. A marble statue stands on a pedestal in the center. Engraved in the bottom of the pool is a circle of Roman numerals. Oh god, okay, that's gonna be important. Alright. Sure. What am I supposed to be looking at? That statue, bro, in the toga. Can you tell who it's supposed to be? Do I want to tell who it's supposed to be? It's Rourke. 
Oh, Lord. Oh, this is evil Tony Stark. <laughs> I can't believe I hadn't noticed that before. The guy put a statue of himself and a toga in the middle of his own hotel. I'm telling you. Tony fucking Stark. That's who this is. I'm cocky as hell, but I'm not even in this guy's league. I don't think he is either, but okay. They laugh, nearly falling on each other, half delirious from exhaustion. I've got to help find answers to where the Watchers took Diego. But, hmm, who should I spend this time with? Okay, so, so we can, they're, they're pushing us toward our love interests is what they're doing. So, who do we meet up with? We can meet up with Sean at the rooftop. Estella at the security office. Quinn at the beach. Or Jake at the bar. Lovely viewers, you know where I'm going with this. I don't know why we're asking this question. <sighs> hey, Jake, what clues are you finding at the hotel bar? Nothing is the answer to that, but here we go. <laughs> Okay, you go after Jake, heading to the cowboy-themed bar on the 8th floor. Oh, Jesus. Why? Is that a fucking mechanical bull? Is that what that is? Oh, y'all. Y'all know. Why is this on a tropical island? Oh, God. You step inside to find it empty. A country ballad plays on the jukebox to no one. Oh, there are so many choices here that, um, that that could be. Someone might call a ballad. Is Neon Moon. <laughs> um, which if you don't know that one, Google, Bro uh, Google Neon Moon by Brooks and Dunn. Um, it's, uh, it's a lovely drinking song. Either, the okay, option is Tequila Talkin' by Lone Star, which... Honestly, no, you know what, that's, that, no, that's my decision, it's tequila talking, is what, is what is playing. I know he's a whiskey man, but it's tequila talking right now. Tequila may cause you to think you can dance, and also that your ex-girlfriends are dying for you to call them at four in the morning. Uh, Jake? He's dead. He's dead, he's killed by the twang. Oh god, you hear a hard smack and a shattering of glass from behind the bar. Oh god, we're gonna have to go, like, wrap him up in that magic aloe on the rooftop, aren't we? Jake, what are you- stop. Stop with this shit. Ow! Damn, that hurt! Alright, he's alive. We've established this. He is in the land of the living. You okay back there? No. Jake stands up, wincing and running a hand through his hair. Yeah, that means no. <clears throat> yeah, just about gave myself a concussion bumping my head, but I'm great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why are you bumping your head, my boy? What are you doing? <laughs> That's what happens when you get a big head about everything. Hey! What can I say? My ego is a gift and a curse, princess. Mm, mm-hmm. Shut up. What are you doing behind the bar, anyway? I thought we were looking for clues to where the Watchers took Diego. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe they swiped some rum because they were going to have a party. We gotta know. We've gotta know. Yeah, I think they left their address at the bottom of one of these bottles. Only one way to find out which one. Pour it all down the sink? Jake, there are two ways to find out which one. He's not thinking about that, though. He smirks and winks at you, but he can't completely hide the sadness in his eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake... 
You know, did somebody steal some of the booze? Used to be this bottle of Raleigh DeWitt gold whiskey sitting here. Been saying I was saving it for when things were, really went down the crapper. Jake. <laughs> and, well, I think it's about time. But look, somebody guzzled the whole thing. It's empty. Are you sure, are you very sure, this wasn't you? Yeah. Jake! <laughs> Jake shuts up. He bites his lip and stares at the floor. My god, the three happiest words in all the books. Jake shuts up. <laughs> I'm worried about him too, but... Um, we can say... You, you, you need to get your act together if we want to save him. Or, I'm here for you no matter what. Hmm. Thing about Jake is he doesn't really seem to respond to, like, the... The soft approach. So, I'm worried about him too. You need to get your act together if we want to save him. You're right. Like always. Look at me, I'm pathetic. Jake picks up the empty bottle of Raleigh DeWitt gold and hurls it into the wall. It shatters in a rain of glass. Jake drops out of sight beneath the bar. Yeah, cool, throwing shit at walls, always a great sign. God damn it, Jake. Get your... Seriously, get your fucking act together. What the hell? Do your own emotional labor, my man. You walk around the corner to find him sitting on the floor. You scoot in beside him. I ain't given a damn about people in a long time, princess. Then you came along and pretty much blew that whole plan straight to hell. Yeah, I'm good at that. Anyway, thanks to you, I'm finding myself all torn up inside over your gang of little rascals. And it's all your fault. Yeah, 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 we know, you like us. <laughs> My fault? How do you figure that? Because he's trying to... Yeah. I'm a man. I don't feel these feelings unless someone makes me because I am a manly man. Shut up, Jake. Jake snorts a laugh and looks at you. Your face is close. Strands of his sandy hair fall across his shining eyes. Aww. Fucking aloes. Oh my god. This, this man needs to go through about, like, three weeks of therapy before we can even start talking, but sure. <laughs> Not sure if you noticed last night, but you kind of blew my mind. <laughs> Wow. One night of hot sex and he's in the palm of our hand. Cool. That was easy. <laughs> I definitely noticed. By the way, I hope to God you all had protection. <clears throat> Jake's face is so close to yours, you can see the light catching on his eyelashes. I suppose he has better eyelashes than I do, the little shit. So we can kiss him, which starts us dating him, or turn away. Kissing is an option. Take a drink. Alright. Again, if y'all don't know where I'm going with this, you you probably honestly haven't been here for the last few streams. So, um, to no one's surprise, we're going to kiss him. Ooh. You leave. Really? The slutty music? Ugh! All we're doing is kissing him, right? Right? 
Please. <laughs> you lean into Jake, your lips meeting softly at first. You pull apart, just an inch, staring into each other's eyes. Which is really fucking hard when you're only an inch away from somebody's face. Y'all going cross-eyed and shit. This is not... This looks really good on a camera. It is not very fun when you're actually trying to do it. And then, as if you heard a starting gun, you collapse into one another with a frenzy of passion. I... Kinda never want to see the word passion again after that, but thank you. Oh, good lord! This boy was too drunk to stand up a second ago, and now... Jake picks you up with ease, sitting you down on the edge of the bar. You yank off his jacket while he pulls up your shirt. Boy, did we discuss this? We did not. Does this mean we're... I guess. Yeah. And it's not like... No. Cool. <laughs> well, well, I guess that's settled. You notice Furball curled beneath a book display. We never asked Furball what he wanted to do. I'm just saying. Hey, little guy. Why are you trembling? What are you scared of? Poor baby! Comfortable boy! Oh, he's scared. Look at him. You follow Furball's eyes to a red velvet frame on the wall. A strange scepter is mounted within. That is the scariest looking Caduceus I've ever seen. We're going to examine it. What in the hell is that monstrosity? Three snakes. No, a hydra. In the shape of a... A caduceus. The symbol of medicine used worldwide. Originally the icon of Mercury, the god's messenger. Mercury, huh? So this scepter is Roman? Like Pompeii? Analyzing. Origin undetermined. Odd. This is the only article in the library I cannot identify. Hmm. So we shall open the Homeric Odes. You take the heavy book and flip to chapter 12. His staff aloft o'er glimmering waters, the herald god marked the height of the day. And lo, the path to the depths, yaw depths yawned open. To conquer the heavens, a man must journey below. A girl has no name. Sorry. What could it mean? It has to be important. Well... The staff of the Herald God. That's gotta be this thing, right? The cud cuddle, cuddle, dude. You mean the so we can say Kudakius, sed sedecuous, or the actual correct answer, which is Caduceus. Oh, two points with Iris. Hello, correct. Right. That. Yeah. Sounds like this Caduceus is supposed to open a path below something. Right. When the scepter is held aloft or glimmering waters. Hmm. Where could we find water? On a tropical island. I wonder. Sweet Jesus, Craig, we're on an island. Thank you, Michelle. A more specific, maybe? Where have we seen someone standing over glimmering water? So we can say the sea, the atrium, the pool, or the... 
the toilet? Really? No, it's... It's the atrium. It's the weird statue guy. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say! And it got us two points with Michelle, hey. Yeah, the statue of Rourke over the fountain's glimmering waters. Hell yeah. Point with Sean, too. Marking the height of day. Oh, it, it's a freaking sundial! When we give the staff to the Herald, the fountain becomes a sundial. And the sundial opens the path. But wait, how are we supposed to know what time it opens? Height of day. She literally just said it, Michelle. Think about what we know. It's got to be... So, we can say sunrise, noon, sunset, or midnight. No, height of day. It's got to be noon. Come on. The height of day, chapter 12. Time, Lila. 12 on the dot. All right, let's see if that was good enough. Everyone stares at the statue. The sun shines through the glass roof, the staff casting a slow-moving shadow on the fountain's numerals. Clunk! A mechanical sound vibrates the floor. Whoa! Watch out! The tiles behind the fountain drop down into the floor, forming a staircase down. Okay, that's actually pretty dope. Alright, folks, guess we're going down into whatever sex dungeon Rourke has set up. Oh, don't you just hope, Jake. Shut up. Ugh, was that mental image really necessary? Dude, we've all seen your dad naked. It, there's no going back from that, Alistair. We've literally all seen your dad naked. Yeah. You yeah, know, Malfoy, I immediately regretted it. I'm sorry. What? Jake McKenzie just apologized of his own accord? Oh. Oh, be still my Aero Ace heart. Hello. Okay. You know what? Because we haven't had a lot of drinking going on. I'm just going to go right ahead and count that as someone swooning. Take a drink. Because I didn't say it had to be a character. Ooh, I love a man who's emotionally intelligent. And that's why he's fictional. Your friends head below, single file. Jake takes your hand, lacing his fingers with yours. Aww, he's so cute. You're not actually nervous about going down here, are you, tough guy? Um, my guess is that he's a little more nervous about us going down there, but sure. <laughs> nah, just wanted an excuse to hold your hand. Oh, okay, that was actually kind of cute. That was kind of cute, not gonna lie. In the darkness, your feet feel the smooth floor even out. You all stand there in silence, seeing nothing, hearing only each other's breathing. You squeeze Jake's hand, summon your courage, and take another step forward. Shack! A floor tile depresses slightly like a button, and the lights come blasting on. Oh god, that would hurt. Oof. Yeah. Okay, we are in a really weird art gallery. Sure. What the... Dude, it's not a sex dungeon. Rourke's got a man cave. A man cave with a teddy bear in a glass case, is it? And a weird statue thing and a glove. But I'm really more interested in this teddy bear over the top of Craig's shoulder here. 
A little dusty. Don't think anybody's been here in a while. You notice Michelle lingering by one of the pedestals. A beautiful idol several inches tall gleams within. Isn't this gorgeous? What is it? Is it gold? No, actually, I think it's amber. You press a small green button on the side of the pedestal. The glass dome divides and retracts into the base. Michelle picks up the idol. It's so beautiful. She offers it to you. It's the strange idol. We shall touch it. It's a bad idea. The moment your fingers graze it. Yeah, see, I knew this was a bad idea. You're in a bedroom in a college sorority house. It's spring outside. What are you talking about? I didn't... Yes, Michelle. Yes, you did. Your closest friends told me. You cheated. It's over. Sean turns to go. <sighs> Don't say that! You can't leave me! We built something for two years, and it meant nothing to you. Of course it's over. How could I ever trust you again? Once you break that trust, there's no putting it back together. Sean walks out, slamming the door behind him. Michelle sits down on her bed, wiping a tear from her eye. After a moment, someone knocks. Alright, somebody's knocked on the door. Take a drink. Aw, Mish! You okay in there? Can we get you some chamomile? Oh boy. Uh, uh, just, just need a minute. Thanks, girls. Three pairs of footsteps leave. Michelle is left in silence until giggles drift up to her open bedroom window. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sean totally bought it. O-M-G. I can't believe it worked. You know, she probably did cheat on him sometime or another. That total skank. She thinks she's so smart. So much better than us. Um, getting a real quick impression she is better than you, but okay. How does she not get that everyone in the sorority totally hates her? Because you don't use your words and communicate like adults is why. All the while, you watch Michelle's face. She hears every word, but she doesn't shout or sob. Her eyes just go cold. You're yanked forward as if by your very heart. Suddenly, you're on a storm-swept beach. Pelted by rain, Michelle climbs into a rusted sailboat. Michelle, stop! You're gonna get yourself killed, you idiot! No! I'm going! None of you want me here! You never did! Whoa, that is categorically untrue, but okay. You think it's my fault Craig and Alistair are dead? Whoa, hey, what? Of course not, Michelle. Just get out of the boat. We're your friends. Even in the plummeting rain, you can see Michelle's tears. No, you're not. She pushes out to sea. Jake runs after her, but it's too late. No! Michelle, that thing's still out there! 
As her sailboat shrinks in the distance, you see a massive shadow slithering beneath the waves. Oh no. Oh no. <gasps> Michelle! And just like that, you're back in Rourke's museum. Michelle is there next to you. My god, we're gonna need so much therapy when this is over. Whoa, how long was I standing here? What the hell are you talking about? I just handed you that idol thing a second ago. Cool, good to know. You look down. In your hands, the amber idol of a peacock-haired figure gazes blankly up at you. Oh, cool. So it looks like there's 12 of these things and that we're supposed to collect them. Interesting. The sound of footsteps and a slow clap behind you makes you turn. Oh, boy. Ah, <laughs> well done, friends. You found my toys, I see. Oh, my God. Can we just end him now, please? Alistair, take care of this. Figures you'd be the kind of guy that slow claps. Yeah. There's there's some genre savvy there again. Take another drink. Jake, Jake, Jake. And to be fair, I understand your hostility. Ugh. That was very creepy. But you're going to appreciate very quickly that we are on the same side here. Are we, evil Tony Stark? Are we on the same side? You have to prove that. Bro, I don't think you get the situation. You are going to answer our questions, or else. <laughs> or else what? Oh god, we're going to go here, aren't we? Okay, alright. Yeah, huh? Gr Craig grabs him by the collar and lifts him clear off the floor, pinning him to the wall. Rourke just smiles down at him. <laughs> you want to find out, amigo? Oh, God. Oh, no, please don't. So we can say, put him down, Craig, which has a 100% chance of success. Interesting. Or, if I were you, Rourke, I'd listen to my friend here. No, Craig, let's not stoop to his level. Put him down. He just woke up from who knows how long in that tube. He can't help us until he knows what's going on. Hey, I got us three points with Craig, though. I... I trust you on this. Craig sets Rourke down. Rourke smooths his lapels. And now then, where were we? Excellent question. Where the hell were we? You quickly recap for Rourke everything that's happened. The arrival, the Watchers, kidnapping Diego, the time portals, you know, all that stuff. Ah, I have a clearer picture of the situation now. Come along. Excuse you, I'm not your dog to summon. Thank you. You hang back with Jake and Sean. We can't seriously be taking him with us. You got a better idea? He knows the way. <laughs> You're saying we should trust this guy? I'm saying we need this guy. Do we? Because we have a map. So we can say Jake's right or Sean's right. No, I seriously think Jake's right. I don't think we actually need this guy. I don't like him. Jake's right. We're asking for trouble if we bring him. We've got no idea what his angle is. <laughs> My point exactly. <sighs> if I thought there was a better way to bring back Diego, don't you think I'd do it? We have a map, Sean. Come on! It's our fault he's gone, Kira. I've got to do whatever it takes to bring him back. 
Um, <clears throat> technically it's my fault he's gone, so why don't you let me take point on this, Sean? And if you're not willing to come if he's there, well, I understand. I didn't say that, I said we should leave his ass behind. Sean walks off, leaving you and Jake. Hmm. Guess we're stuck with Rourke. No, I don't want this. Do not want. Maybe. But either way, I guarantee you, I'll be keeping my eye on him. This is insane. It's gotta be the hottest day in recorded history. Or pre-recorded history. The sooner we get there, the sooner we can stop walking. Doesn't that sound pleasant? Now hurry up! Can we seriously just shove him off a cliff, I swear to god. I swear to god, I don't want this. Mr. Rourke, you're not even sweating. How is that possible? Because he's dead? I don't know. Impeccable conditioning. Or you're some kind of outer space alien. I bet you just Botoxed your damn sweat gland shut. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't put it past him. Suddenly, you double over in pain. A throbbing headache pounds in your skull. Visions flash before your eyes, as real as anything you've known. This river looks pretty deep. How are we supposed to get across? I had my people search all over the world for you, and we could never find you. Kira? You don't even understand how much you just saved my life. Check it out. I found something at the bottom. Damn. Couldn't you just stay here forever? Uh-oh. The headache fades. Your friends continue on ahead. None of them appear to have noticed. Are you all right, Kira? I... I literally have no idea. This river looks pretty deep. How are we supposed to get across? Huh? Wait. You look up to see that your group has arrived at the banks of a rushing river. Iris. How did I know Quinn was going to say that? I saw all these... visions. Scanning. I detect a disturbance in the tachyon field. It seems that we have entered a time loop. Well, I'm glad Iris is aware of it. Such phenomena normally cannot be sensed by humans. Yet apparently you can see it. Well, hold on. What do you mean a time loop? A period of approximately 12 minutes will repeat indefinitely. Even this very conversation, should you choose to have it again. We're stuck here forever? How do we break the loop? There must be a source of the time disturbance nearby. You must destroy it to escape the loop. Over here, guys. There's a fallen tree going all the way across. We can use it as a bridge. Your group lines up single file to cross the river over the moss-covered log. So, who do we cross the river, the river with? Michelle, Alistair, or Zara? I think I'm going to go with Alistair first. You line up behind Alistair, following him and Grace across. Alistair takes Grace's hand. Steady now. Look straight ahead rather than down. It, it improves your balance and sense of horizon. Uh, I do kind of need to know where I'm putting my feet, Alistair. I... I think it's working! You wobble, 
barely able to keep balance on the wet, mossy wood. Whoa! When you fall into the river like a buffoon, Kira, I beg of you, please do not allow the water to splash me. How on earth are you balancing so well? Simple. I alone brought very few possessions on this trip. I've no interest in materialism. Wow, you are not your father's child, are you? My bag is nearly empty. Thus, I am unencumbered while you drag yourself down with silly trinkets. Hmm. Bag is nearly empty. This is important. With everyone across the river, your group continues. Rourke whistles cheerfully to himself. Okay, I guess we can talk to Rourke. All right, Rourke. You promised me some answers. Do you know what business I'm in? I don't know. Resorts? I dabble. But mainly I'm in the business of information. And that means I don't give it away for free. I expect a trade. Oh god. I'll answer one question of yours. Only one. But first you will answer one of mine. Fair. <sighs> Fair. My question is very simple. What is your name? What is your quest? What is your favorite color? Sorry. Not really sorry. It's... It's Kira. 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 What a delicious name. Oh my god, never say that again. Please never say that again. I had my people search all over the world for you, and we could never find you. And we realize, and to realize that all this time you were a student at Hartfield, like Alistair. Let's just say if we survive this, I'll be firing my intelligence staff. Mm, mm-hmm, okay. Alright, you've gotten more than enough out of us today. My turn to ask questions. I want to ask, we can say, where is everyone? What was that tube we found you in? Or what was that radio call we heard? Um, I think I'm gonna ask, what was that radio call we heard? The one you heard over the satellite array in the observatory, yes. I strongly suspect that was an echo from our planet's likely future. Okay. An echo? From the future? Yes. Right now, we are in a bubble of time. Safe for the moment. But an eruption of Mount Etropo risks plunging the planet itself into a prehistoric time, when all the world was lava. Okay, I don't like the idea that one volcano is that powerful. Civilization would immediately be engulfed in the fire of a bygone era. Why do I get the feeling this doesn't actually bother you? That, my young friend, is what I need your help to prevent. Oh, so you say it bother- Say it bothers you. Sure. That's all you're getting out of me for now. We must focus on the road ahead. Rourke shoos you away. You smile to yourself. Jake is standing high atop a boulder, peering northeast. He hops down. There's a nice clearing out that way to the right. The river ends in this beautiful lake if you follow it a bit. Hmm. Might be helpful to send someone to get our bearings. I could go. It does look beautiful out there. 
<laughs> you want some company? Mmm, do I now? So we can have Jake accompany us, or we can have Estella accompany us for 20 diamonds. I think you can guess where I'm going with this. Hey, Jake. Let's go. We can also just go by ourselves, but... You and Jake follow the river up to the clearing. A gorgeous, shimmering lake sparkles before you. <laughs> wow. It's beautiful. Yeah, you could say that. Does that look like snow to you? In the distance, the mountain range gleams white in the sun. You're right. In the middle of the in the middle of a heat wave? I didn't think the mountains here were tall enough for that. <laughs> yeah, cuz they're not. He leads you over to the base of the mountains, where snow has piled up in the shade. You reach down and scoop up a handful. So we have found a, a clue. It is the snowfall. Hmm. It is snow. This place is making less and less sense every minute. Jake steps to the water's edge and skips a pebble across its placid surface. You join him under the blistering sun. Damn hot out. Could use a minute to cool off. I think we should... We can swim in the lake, relax and drink the chilled water, or have a snowball fight. I think we're going to swim in the lake. You both strip down and wade into the crisp, cool water of the lake. You feel instantly refreshed. Yeah, of course he took his shirt off. Damn. Couldn't you just stay here forever? <laughs> More than you know. Growing up in Louisiana, I used to swim in the bayou all the time. We'd have to clear out real quick if a gator showed up, though. Uh, yeah, I would imagine. You miss home, don't you? Hmm? Nah. Not much back there for me anymore. The cold lake water begins to chill your bones. You feel yourself tremble. <laughs> you shivering? Uh, maybe? <laughs> Here, I'll warm you up. Oh, will you now? Mmm. Jake takes you in his arms. Floating there together in the pristine water, you... We can kiss him or splash him. Um... I... Okay, wait, hang on. I'm sitting here thinking about this. Kissing is an option. Take a drink. Guess I'm gonna kiss him. Your hand moves up Jake's chest, over his neck, running your fingers through his hair. Then you pull him in, kissing him deeply. He picks you up in the water, never breaking the kiss. Hmm, feeling warmer? <laughs> you could say that. The two of you return from the lake. You catch up with the rest of your group as they approach an ancient, eroded stone pillar. So we can talk to Craig or Sean. Um, so I guess, I guess we'll talk to, we talk to Craig. You wander over, joining Craig on the long hike. He wipes sweat from his brow. Dude, this is garbage. It's so hot. Can't we take a break? You're tired because you're wasting energy complaining. I'm gonna waste energy beating your ass, geezer. 
Wow, Craig. Down boy. Come on, there's some awesome shade over there from that stone pillar thingy. Craig, we can say, let's all take a quick break. Or, keep up the pace. Mm, no, let's all take a break. Finally! Everyone's relieved to sit down. Alistair slumps against a tree, throwing his bag aside. Craig leans against the shady side of the stone pillar. Sweet, sweet shade. This is heaven right now. Crink. Craig's weight against the pillar shifts the stone blocks. The pillar begins to topple over. <gasps> Alistair, look out! Alistair scrambles out of the way just as... The pillar shatters into a mound of rubble. You nitwit! You utter simpleton! You just crushed my bag! That's important, I guess. My bee, dude. Alistair dumps out the few contents of his bag. Fortunately, I had next to nothing in there. I could have had much more. Hmm. Maybe we should keep moving before we destroy more ancient priceless artifacts. Wow, subtle dig at Craig there. But nap time. Ugh. In a flash, you're back at the riverbank. Whew. This river looks pretty deep. How are we supposed to get across? Whoa, that must have been the time loop. I need to think about what I learned and make progress each time. All right, Rourke, you promised me some answers. Oh, do you know what business I'm in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Information, yeah, I got it. You tell me one thing, I tell you one thing. Deal. Oh, wow, okay, we're just gonna skip that. Cool. Straight to the point, I see. Then tell me. You want to know my name? It's Kira. My turn. Wow. I love it. Thank you. I want to ask, we can say, uh, where is everyone? What was that tube we found you in? Or why did you bring us here? Why did you bring us here? I presumed this would be your question. During the most recent expansion of the Celestial's facilities, a worker discovered a photograph buried in the sands. It was dated to be 500 years old, despite the art of photography only having existed for 200. Photographed therein were 11 young people, all of you except Alistair. I knew you must be criti somehow be critical to solving this island's mysteries. Why not just tell us that? Frankly, I intended to. I intended to enlist your help to save the world. Clearly the world had other plans. That's all you're getting out of me for now. We must focus on the road ahead. Rourke shoos you away. You smile to yourself. That's all I can ask him this time, but he won't remember once the time loop resets. You notice Jake and Estella peering out toward the lake in the clearing. Hmm, should I ask them about visiting the lake again? We can go to the lake or stay here. I'm gonna go to the lake. We're gonna keep racking up points here. So we're gonna go with Jake again. You and Jake follow the river up to the clearing. A gorgeous shimmering lake sparkles before you. Jake steps to the water's edge and skips a pebble across its placid surface. You join him under the blistering sun. Damn hot out. Could use a minute to cool off. So I think we should relax and drink the chilled water or have a snowball fight. We're just going to go down the list. Relax and drink the chilled water. You sit down close to each other by the shore, filling your bottles with the clear, ice-cold water. You take a sip. <laughs> know what, princess? I think that's about the best water I've ever tasted. 
He skips rocks across the lake, making a string of perfectly circular ripples across its mirrored surface. You're pretty good at that. Growing up in rural Louisiana, me and my sister had a lot of practice entertaining ourselves. Life could get a little boring. Your sister? You don't talk about her much. Nope. But one day I'll tell you all about her. Jake turns and smiles at you, his hair tousling in the wind. I love it. So we can kiss him or make him promise kissing is an option. Take a drink. Oh, I never even turned it off from last time. Just take another drink. Um, probably doesn't matter what we do. Making him promise doesn't mean anything because he's not going to remember it. So I may as well get my kicks in, I guess, and just kiss him again. Whoa, okay. Start fast. You push Jake down onto the grass and straddle him. You lean down and kiss him deeply. Then you sit up, your hands on his chest, and give him a wink. <laughs> what was that for? Not that I'm complaining. Just wanted to make sure life wasn't getting too boring for you. Wow. <laughs> Goddess points, though. Around you? I don't think even think that's possible. The two of you return from the lake. And there's the time warp again. In a flash, you're back at the riverbank. This river looks pretty deep. How are we supposed to get across? I'm still searching for the source of the time loop. Iris said it's around, it's somewhere around here, but where? It must be hidden, it must be somewhere less obvious. Hidden where I can't see. Over here, guys. There's a fallen tree going all the way across. We can use it as a bridge. Your group lines up single file to cross the river over the moss-covered log. I'm going to go with Michelle again because I think we're supposed to find something if she lets us help her look for her contact. So, You line up behind Michelle to cross the mossy log. She easily dances across to the far side. Ah! Damn it! I just lost a contact lens! Hey, Michelle, we can say, can I help you look, which is still the 67% chance of success, or good luck finding it. Let's try again. Can I help you look? Nope. Why? So you can laugh at me? Just leave me alone. I don't need you. You shrug and keep walking, thinking to yourself. Hmm. Maybe I'd have better luck next time. She won't remember when the time loops, after all. Yeah, we're gonna have to go do it again. You and Jake follow the river up to the clearing. A gorgeous, shimmering lake sparkles before you. Jake steps up to the water's edge and skips a pebble across its placid surface. You join him under the blistering sun. Damn hot out. Could use a minute to cool off. I think we should. We are down to our last choice, which is have a snowball fight. Before Jake can react, you pick up a small scoop of snow and peg him with it. Oh, a sneak attack. Oh, you little. Ha <laughs> ha, bet you can't catch me. In a flash, you and Jake are hurling little snowballs at each other, diving and rolling out of the way. At last, you hit Jake square in the face with a snowball. Oh no. <laughs> he grins and lets himself fall into the snowbank. You got me. I give up. You dive into the snowbank after him. <laughs> you sure surrender easy, don't you? Only to you. Wow. Wow, that was cheesy. Okay. Lying on your back, you look over at Jake and... We can kiss him or hit him with a snowball again. No, we're not going to keep up the snowball fight. 
Kissing is an option. Take another drink. I like how I never took it down from the last time again. Like, it's just always an option. Just kiss him. You turn in the bed of snow to face him, leaning close. Your lips meet, and the heat of your kiss seems to melt all the snow around you. I accept nothing but unconditional surrender. Yeah, there's our points. Well, I don't want to make this too easy for you. You fall back into another kiss. The two of you return from the lake. In a flash, you're back at the riverbank. Alright, so that's the quick op option. It's good to know. This river looks pretty deep. How are we supposed to get across? You line up behind Michelle to cross the mossy log. She easily dances across to the far side. Ah! Damn it! I just lost a contact lens! Hey, Michelle! Can I help you look? Please, can I help you look? Ah, oh, finally! Yes! Okay. Michelle sizes you up for a moment. Ugh, fine. So long as you agree, I never asked for help. You get on your hands and knees beside Michelle, and the two of you comb through the high grass. <sighs> this is impossible! Wait, hold on, I found it! Here! Kira, you don't even understand how much you just saved my life. I hope you have contact lens solution. Do not put that contact lens back in your eye without cleaning it off first. I have heard stories. Whoa. There's something else here, too. Yes. You reach your hand through the grass, closing your fingers around something small and bright red. Which we shall examine. Looks an awful lot like a shotgun shell to me. What the hell is that? Jake spots you and takes a knee by your side. <laughs> well, looky here. That's a 12-gauge armor-piercing shell casing. It's for the USAS-12 automatic shotgun. Great, that's what I needed to know existed on this island. Let me tell you, that's some heavy-duty firepower. Hell, my old Black Ops squad used those. Yeah, and it's not in our hands, and that scares the hell out of me. So you're saying whoever fired it meant business. Alright, found the clue. That's an understatement. With everyone across the river, your group continues. Rourke whistles cheerfully to himself. Yeah, I really... I don't have a lot of interest in anything else he has to say. Keep walking. In a flash, you're back at the riverbank. Your group lines up single file to cross the river over the moss-covered log. This time... I don't know why Michelle is sad now, but I'm not gonna find out. We're gonna cross with Zara. You follow Zara onto the narrow, slick log. Together, you inch your way across. This is total bull. I do not do the outdoors. You can make it, Zara. I know I can make it. I'm just a little out of my element. Whoa! Zara teeters, about to fall in. So we can grab her or let her fall in. I'm gonna let her fall. I'm a horrible person. You do nothing. Zara loses her balance and goes headfirst into the river. <laughs> Ugh! Thanks for the help, Kira. At least I didn't lose a point with you. <laughs> no sweat. Uh, could someone give me a hand up? There's something glowing at the bottom of the river. Get me out of here. You and Craig help Zara back onto the log. What was it? Oh shit, we do have to do this again, actually. No idea. But it's way down there, and even if I wanted to find out, I'm nowhere near a good enough swimmer to dive that deep. Shit, because yeah, we have to have Sean dive in, and then we have to- oh god. With everyone across the river, your group whis or your group continues. Rourke whistles cheerfully to himself. 
so we're gonna skip him, keep walking. You notice Jake and Estella peering out toward the lake in the clearing. Should I ask them about visiting the lake again? Nope, we're gonna stay here. You catch up with the rest of your group as they approach an ancient eroded stone pillar. So now we have to talk to Sean. You jog forward to join Sean. Hey there, Kira. Hot as hell, isn't it? Kinda wishing I'd jumped in the river back there. <laughs> I would have liked to see you fall in. Yeah, but that's because you want this whole expedition to turn into a wet t-shirt contest. The current looked pretty fast. Fortunately, I'm a strong swimmer. Back during my sophomore year, I blew out my knee. It took a lot of rehab, a lot of which was swimming. I always thought there was something really calming about it. It centered me. Hey, you know, Zara said she saw something in the river. Think you could grab it for me? <laughs> sure thing. You and Sean return to the riverbank. He pulls off his shirt. Because of course he does. Third wheel took his shirt off. Take a drink. And finally take down the kissing as an option rule too. Looks deep, but I should be able to get down there. Sean dives in with hardly a splash. He's under for what feels like five minutes and then... Check it out, I found something at the bottom. Sean climbs out of the river and puts something heavy and smooth in your hands. It is a crystal orb, which we shall examine. Whoa, it's another one of those glowing orbs like we found in the abandoned mining tunnels. Touching this one isn't doing anything, but it still feels like there's some kind of energy running through it. You carry the orb in your hands. Hmm, this has to be what's causing the time loop. I need to destroy it, but how? Well, I know how. We've got to do this all again. You smash it as hard as you can against a rock. What are you doing? Uh, trying to break it, obviously. We see that, but why? Because we're all stuck in a time loop, and if I tell you that, you're going to freak out, and I'll break time. Iris said I could really mess up the time continuum if I tell them. Because I have anger issues? Truth. I feel ya. Well, could you please not destroy something that could be important? The others walk away. <sighs> if only they could know how important it is. Alright. Do this one more time. In a flash, you're back at the riverbank. This river looks pretty deep. How are we supposed to get across? The crystal orb Sean found is at the bottom of the river is in your hands. The orb stayed with me. It didn't go back in the river when time reset. It must exist outside time, like me. Over here, guys. There's a fallen tree going all the way across. We can use it as a bridge. Your group lines up single file to cross the river over the moss-covered log. So you have to go with Alistair. You line up behind Alistair, following him and Grace across. Alistair takes Grace's hand. Steady now. Look straight ahead rather than down. It improves your balance and sense of horizon. I... I think it's working! You wobble, barely able to keep balance on the wet, mossy wood. Whoa! When you fall into the river like a buffoon, Kira, I beg of you, please do not allow the water to splash me. How on earth are you balancing so well? Simple. I alone brought very few possessions on this trip. I've no interest in materialism. 
My bag is nearly empty. Thus, I am unencumbered while you drag yourself down with silly trinkets. In that case, think you could carry this for me? You show Alistair the blue crystal orb. Another one of those damned things! Wait a moment. What makes you think I'd carry something for you? Because I'll put in a good word for you with Grace? Ooh. Ugh, give it here. <laughs> Alistair puts the crystal orb into his bag. With everyone across the river, your group continues. Rourke whistles cheerfully to himself. I do not want to talk to him. We're going to keep walking. You notice Jake and Estella peering out toward the lake in the clearing. Hmm, should I ask them about visiting the lake again? No, we've done everything with Jake. We're going to stay here. You catch up with the rest of your group as they approach an ancient eroded stone pillar. All right, so last thing is Craig. Let's do this. You wander over, joining Craig on the long hike. He wipes sweat from his brow. Dude, this is garbage. It's so hot. Can't we take a break? You're tired because you're wasting energy complaining. I'm gonna waste energy beating your ass, geezer. Come on, there's some awesome shade over there from that stone pillar thingy. Craig, the game is trying so hard now. Let's all take a quick break. Finally. Everyone's relieved to sit down. Alistair slumps against a tree, throwing his bag aside. Craig leans against the shady side of the stone pillar. Sweet, sweet shade. This is heaven right now. Crink. Craig's weight against the pillar shifts the stone blocks. The pillar begins to topple over. <gasps> Alistair, look out! Alistair scrambles out of the way, just as... <laughs> the pillar shatters into a mound of rubble. You nitwit! You utter simpleton! You just crushed my bag! My be, dude. Alistair dumps out the contents of his bag, including... The crystal orb, now cracked in two and colored a dull gray. Yes! That's it! I destroyed the source of the time loop! Apologies for your belongings, Kira, but... I did it! <laughs> uh, what now? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Can we keep going now? Yes, now we can. Hey, Kira, you see that over there? Sean points in the distance. The glint of gold sparkles in the tree, high in the... Or in the sun, high in the trees. I thought that made no sense. Come on, let's check it out. With the time loop broken, you're finally able to push forward through the rainforest. There's definitely something up there in the branches. So, it is a catalyst idol. We're going to look at it. I see it! It's one of those amber idols like in Work's Museum. Want me to climb up there and grab it for you? So we can say, get me that idol, or leave it. No, we've got to get it. Get me that idol. Let's do it. <laughs> Your wish is my command. Aww. With incredible athleticism, Sean jumps and grabs the bottom branch, pulling himself up. He quickly scales the tree. <gasps> Careful up there! <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm almost at the top already. Yeah, and you weigh a ton, and those branches aren't necessarily rated for that. Whoa. Kira, you're not going to believe this. The tree looks like it's grown around the idol. 
It's like it's part of the tree. How is that possible? Can you even get it out? Yeah, if I just pull real hard... Got it! Sean yanks the idol free from the tree's bark and climbs down. Here you go. Just like last time, the moment you touch the idol, you find yourself thrown through space and time. Suddenly, you're in a college apartment. The LCD clock on the microwave reads 2.13 a.m. Sean rubs his eyes, exhausted, slouched over a pile of economics homework after a long day of practice, classes, and his work-study job. Yeah. Whew. Equilibrium price and quantity if demand is... His phone buzzes from a text, and the screen lights up with the word mom. Your dad asked about you again. He misses you. Sean shakes his head and tosses the phone aside. Why is mom texting me at 2.13 in the morning? A key unlocks the door. Craig walks in, looking anxious. Dude, I am so screwed. Know how the coach asked us about the rumors that the sports agent guy was giving free stuff to players? Well... <sighs> Craig opens his backpack to show Sean a brand new high-end laptop. Craig? Dude, why'd you take that? Yeah, because that literally, so the way that college athletics works is if students take any kind of compensation for their role as an athlete at the school... Um, whether that's from coaches, whether that's from corporate sponsors or something like that, it ends their scholarship and they are no longer eligible to play, which means that they also lose their, their access to education. So they literally keep these kids in poverty on purpose. They also tend to pass them through classes by force instead of actually getting them an education anyway, because literally all they care about is the money that they make the school from their merchandise. But they never see a cut of that at all. Which is why I absolutely despise college athletics. Because there have been cases where coaches have, like, bought their uh, players, like, plane tickets home or, like, gift cards or something, and that actually DQ'd their players. So, yeah. Um, the fact that Craig took this laptop from an agent probably means that he's not technically eligible as a student athlete anymore. And that agent probably knows that. So yeah, this is shitty. And Sean literally just says that, but in a shorter way. You know if the NCAA finds out you're taking free stuff, you'll lose your scholarship. You'll be kicked off the team. I know, I'm an idiot, okay? I just really wanted to play this computer game with a girl in my calc class. Ah, oh, gee, I wonder who that could be. My old laptop sucked too hard to handle the graphics, and you know my fam can't afford a decent one. Craig slumps on the couch and hangs his head. I know I shouldn't have taken it, but now I'm screwed. Someone saw me with it and ratted me out. Oh, shit. I'm already on thin ice with Coach. Now I'm done for as soon as he proves I took this laptop. <sighs> He won't. Sean slips the laptop, laptop out of Craig's bag and puts it into his own. <sighs> because I'm the one who took it from the agent. Dude, what? I can't let you take the fall for me. You'll get in so much trouble. I can handle it. You can't. Coach can't kick me off the team, so let me do this. I need you out on that field. You're more than my teammate. You're my brother. I've got this. <sighs> I owe you, man. I owe you everything. Yeah. 
You sling your slingshot forward through time, reality warping all around you until... Sean waves his arms wildly. Over here! Over here, big guy! Look at me! Oh god, it's the saber tooth, and it does not look happy. Sean, what are you doing? Sean distracts the saber tooth away from your friends, leading it toward the cliff edge. Don't worry about me. Run! I can handle it. The saber tooth pounces, pinning Sean to the dirt right by the precipice. Sean uses all of his strength, gripping the tiger's fangs, wrestling it toward the edge. Don't do it, man! Sean, please! No! I've got this. Oh. With that, Sean rolls over the edge of the cliff, taking the tiger with him. They vanish out of sight. Ooh. Kira? You all right? Sean, I kind of just saw your future and you die. Overcome, you pull Sean into a hug. He hesitates at first, then hugs you back. Over Sean's shoulder, you gaze at the amber idol still clenched in your white-knuckled grip. So that is a second idol found. Cool, cool. You all break into a sprint, racing up the hill. The forest grows thinner, sunlight shining through gaps in the canopy. In the distance, you catch sight of an impossibly enormous tree rising into the sky. You finally emerge from the overgrowth, gaining a clearer view. And there is the tree, full of, full of buildings. Interesting. <laughs> Points with Raj. Now that's what I call a treehouse. The Watcher's Village is carved into the side of an absurdly massive tree the size of a skyscraper. And points with Grace as well. I can't believe what I'm seeing. It's impossible. Trees have never grown that large. Yeah, well, Sabertooths aren't supposed to be walking around right now either, Grace, but look where we are. Not yet, you mean. But one day they will. The horns blast again, and far below you see a small phalanx of watchers marching out of the village's base. In the center of the group walks a familiar figure, his hands bound. Is that... It's him! From a distance, you can just make out the figure's face. It's Diego, all like bearded and stuff. Okay, all right. Diego, he's alive. All right, chapter two complete. We found both clues and the catalyst idol. Cool. That took longer than I planned because of how long that took with Michelle. Um, so I will be back with more of Endless Friday next Friday. So same time, same place, twitch.tv slash aromantic ace at 7 p.m. Pacific. Come this Monday will be more Perfect Match Monday. So we will finish off uh, book one of Perfect Match. And um, we'll see what happens after that. I haven't decided whether I'm going to start book two or whether I'm going to start a different book. Um... So tune in for that again, 7 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash aromantic ace. Um, so y'all enjoy whatever it is you do between now and Monday. Catch you later.